Hey everybody, it's Christopher Naiman. Today I'm going to show you what you've been waiting for, how to make these beautiful, beautiful decorative thread rope bowls. I've been reading um, your comments over the year and you really, really like these and you want to learn how to make them. So I'm going to show you how to make them. Stay with me. I'll be right back. Now, if you followed my previous videos I did about a year or so ago, I did a few tutorials on how to use this rope from the dollar store, how to make a rope bowl with this rope. When I saw this, when I saw, you know, everyone was making rope bowls for the longest time, and I didn't bother looking, I didn't bother making them. And then one day I said, you know what? I'm going to try a rope bolt, but I want to do something different than what everybody else is doing. When I was in a dollar store that day, I saw these ropes, these three different color rope of rope. This is diamond braid rope, um, 3 16th of an inch. Uh, let's see, what is it? it it's uh, made in China. And it was fun. It was fun to make, and a lot of you were really receptive to it, and you liked it. And I got, I got noticed. I got um, messages from Facebook and everywhere. People saying, hey, "My dollar store is out of them. I can't find them. I can't find them." You know what? My local dollar store ran out of them also. It was so funny because as soon as I posted the videos on this, I went to my dollar store to buy more, and that whole wall was gone, gone. And also. I'll tell you when that another time it happened like that is when I was teaching people under Singer Futura how to uh, redirect the thread and use these 3M command clips, the fridge clips, and all of a sudden all the fridge clips were gone everywhere. Maybe I should reconsider getting residuals for advertising. Maybe I should consider that because I think I've missed a couple opportunities to make a lot of money uh, because I'm always referring things and it's really funny how. You know how many people went and bought what I suggested so um, yeah these are fun now how do we get all of this color oh my god look at this how beautiful is this it is it's an artist's dream I'm gonna warn you right now I'm gonna stop right now I'm gonna warn you if you are afraid of color you might as well shut this video off and go away just go away if you're afraid of color if you're a monotone person, you're afraid of color, you are not going to appreciate this. If you love color, and see, even metallic thread, I threw some metallic thread in here. See that? If you love color and you love artsy things, you're going to love this video. And I know most of you are because you've been asking for it forever. So how do we get all this color on here? Also, I'm going to show you, look at this. See, you've got the back, you've got the front. This one here... There's the back of it, there's the front. What I mean by the front is this is the side that I'm sewing, and what's in the bobbin is back down here. Now, to get this look, we're going to change the bobbin several times. And we have to wind a lot of bobbins of different colors. Because as we're sewing, we're going to change the color up. So we'll stop, we'll change the bobbin thread, and we'll continue. Sometimes I'll change the thread when it tells me it's almost out of bobbin thread. And sometimes I'll just see, I'll do a couple rows of one color and I'll say, oh, I want to change the top thread and the bobbin thread. And I change the top thread quite often as well. So you're in charge as the artist and you'll be creating. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, when you think you're not doing, a, it, not, it doesn't look right and you change color, all of a sudden it starts to, to melt together. Suddenly it comes together. So don't, there's never a mistake. There's never a mistake when you make these. It's all about how it, the colors blend and melt together. So don't be afraid to put different colors together. Now, how do we do this? Well, look, we're going to use serger thread. Yes, you heard me right. Serger cone thread. Serger cone thread is economical to make these rope balls because you get a lot on one spool. And we're not just using one spool of thread. We're going to be doing two spools of thread through the eye of one needle. Yes, yes, yes. You heard me right. Two threads through the eye of one needle. That's how we get such a heavy concentration of thread on here. Right? So you have to think outside the box. Now, if you're not color coordinated or if you don't understand color balancing or color opposites or whatever, 
just look at different ideas. Look at different color. You know, get a color wheel. Look at the color wheel. Look at the opposites. Look at the color, complementary color next to it, and this and that. Contrasting colors, and then you'll get ideas what colors go together. You know, if you um, uh, study artwork, look at colors that are next to each other in artwork. Uh, go to um, places like uh, furniture. You know, look in the room sets and see what colors they match with the room sets, like bedding and pillowcases, and see the colors that they put together and stuff like that. Like this color and this color would go good together. Also, this would go good together. A dark with a light would always go good together. This is this is a purple with a violet. And you know, then you can use neon. Neon, look at that. You'd be surprised at some of the colors that you probably wouldn't normally choose how well they go together. Look at this. You got um, a seafoam green with a kind of a teal. And then here, here's a teal here. A darker teal. So you can do that. And you can do that. You see that? Uh, we've got yellow. What goes good with yellow? Green goes good with yellow. Even an orange would go good with yellow. Then you have red. What, go, go, what goes with red? Well, you could do that would make it interesting. Or you can do a darker red. Let's see, I have a lighter red, darker red. I had a burgundy here earlier. You can, here we go, here, burgundy. A burgundy with a red. You see? You'll experiment. You can even do a pink with a red or a pink with a burgundy. There's so many different choices, so many options. If you're more of a calmer person, you know, you don't want anything too bright, you've got brown with tan. Brown with green, if you're a traditionalist, you know, there's a different color brown with it. Then you have, you have like a goldenrod color with the brown. Here's a yellow with a, like a, it's more like a yellowish color with the brown. So the choices are limitless. They really are limitless. You know, you got orange with the green, or you could do orange with variegated orange. You could do the variegated with the green. I mean, there, there's just so many different things. I mean, I love the neons too. I love using neon. So, you, so much to choose from. Here's black. What do I use black for? Lots of times I finish my edges off with black. And sometimes I'll mix black with a color. I'll do black with, you know, add a different color with the black and it just gives a whole different look. You know, you got blues. Here's a blue with this. Navy with a darker blue. Sometimes I'll use the, the blue with the black. So you have all these different things to experiment with. And there's never anything, there's, you, can't, you cannot make a mistake. You cannot make a mistake. You really cannot. Because it's all about playing with colors. Like for instance, when, I'm, when I was doing, let me show you one here. Um, you know, looking at these colors... Like, you look at the back of this, this is, this is the, this is how you sew, and then here's the back, the bobbin, right? When I look at these colors, and I, I go down, it reminds me of, you know, digging down, down into the earth, looking all, all the way down to the center of the earth, where it's really hot and on fire. So, you, you do whatever you want. Like I said, I tried doing some metallic thread on here, which gives it a little glisten. Uh, isn't that beautiful? Can you see the glisten in that? Just, there's so many different things you can do. Now... For the needle, I will tell you to use a leather needle. You can use a leather needle size 16 or size 18. I found size 16 or 18 will work great. It's got a wider eye on it, so you can fit the two threads through the eye of one needle. And it's got the, the chisel point, which will go through this, this uh, rope. So somebody asked me, so, well, why wouldn't you use a different kind of needle? Well, you know what? I experimented with different types of needles, and I was getting skip stitches. And when I found that the leather needle worked perfect, I've been using a leather needle on all, the video, all my rope balls, and I, and I never have any skip stitches. So uh, if you want to question why I use something, it's because it works for me. If something else you discover works better for you, then go ahead and use it. But I'm telling you what works for me, and that's all I can tell you in my videos is what works for me. So, now that I've showed you what I'm going to use for the thread and the needle and how we're going to obtain this beautiful look with all these rope bowls, I want to welcome you to my classroom and let's get started at the sewing machine. Okay, so I wound up a whole group of different colored bobbins. 
so I'll have a good selection. I'm going to start out with this navy blue bobbin. It doesn't matter what color you start with. It's just something I just randomly chose right now. And then I'm going to repeat what I said earlier. I'm using a size 16 leather needle. Okay. I'm going to be using the green rope. And here's a little tip for you all. If the beginning of the rope is a little bit hard, I want you to trim that off. Trim that off and just lightly hit it with a lighter just so it's not real hard. You don't want that real hard there because sometimes when they seal at the factory this melts and it gets it's really hard and you don't want your needle going through that. Okay? Alright, now let me show you my settings. Alright, so I'm going to start out with a zigzag stitch in the middle center position. I'm going to increase the stitch length to 2.0 to start with. And my width is going to be, I'm going to take that to 5, uh, let's see, we'll keep that at 7.0. All right, and then let's do the tension. So let's see, we have tension here. Okay, so now the tension, which is right here, it's at 3.0. I'm just going to knock it down by one. That's it, just one. And then for the top, you can see that I'm going to use two spools of thread, and I'm feeding it. There's a little thread guide that connects to your machine when you buy the thread adapter and it just gets fed in through the machine as one thread and threaded through the eye of the needle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rope and I'm going to we're going to make an oblong bowl and I'm just going to eyeball it. This is all I do guys. I'm just going to eyeball. Now you can use your stiletto to help you get started. And this is not where you're going to cover the, the rope completely. This is just where you're going to get started to get tacked tack in place. The longer stitch length that we set will help to move the rope through. And the stitch length I have is 2.0 right now. I have it set to stop with the needle in the left position when I stop and the machine stops with the needle down. I'm using my knee lifter. If you have a knee lifter, use a knee lifter. If you have an auto pivot, use an auto pivot. Let's see here. I want to get a few rounds started here. You know, I got to tell you a story. I went into my sewing store and I was telling him I'm giving a, a, a class on, on making rope bowls. And he looked at me like someone just told me he was going to die that minute. And he goes, what? And I said, wow, what's wrong? He says, do you know how many repairs I've had coming in from those darn rope bowls those people are trying to make at home? And I said, what do you mean? He goes, every repair that's come in, he says, the ladies are trying to make those rope bowls or watching those videos on YouTube. And he says, he's getting all these repairs in because everybody's messing up their machines, making the rope bowls. And I explained to him, I said, well, I did a couple of videos already. I said, perhaps they're not paying attention to the setup. Perhaps they're not using the right needle. Perhaps they're trying to force things that shouldn't be forced. So he goes, you make rope bowls too? And I said, yeah. I says, 
Let me show you. So I show them the photos of all my rope bowls that I make. Then I show him a couple links to my YouTube videos. He says, well, it's obvious you know what you're doing. He said, I should start telling people to watch your videos. He said, because I don't mind making money. He said, but when they're ruining their machines because they don't know what they're doing, he said, they don't understand and they blame the machine. I said, I have the same problem. I hear people always blaming the machine when it's, we know it's not the machine, it's operator error. All right, this is looking pretty good. This is looking pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to start coating the bottom of this. So, how am I going to do that? I'm just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But I'm going to turn my stitch length down. I'm going to turn my stitch length down to... Uh, let's see here. Let's start with... Uh, let's start with point, point 0.90. Let's see what point 0.90 does. I just want to coat this whole bottom with thread. Yeah, it doesn't matter what brand machine that you're using, you just have to have the right setup. Now, some machines are a 7.0 width, some machines are 9.0 width. This particular machine that I'm using is a 9.0 width. And in a moment here, I will switch to a 9.0 width because I want to utilize the widest stitch that I've got. So why don't I do that right now, raise a needle. And I'm going to do a 9.0 width. But guess what? On the zigzag on this machine, it will not go further than 7.0. Now, the decorative stitches, they'll go 9.0, but it won't let me use 9.0 width for zigzag. I know the industrial machines, when they set for 9.0, it works, but this one does not. So, with that said, I will be keeping it at 7.0 width, and your machines will go to 7.0 width as well. I think that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to go back as if I'm sewing it. And let's see how much I like that. Is that tight enough? That looks pretty tight. I got a couple spaces. Let me go over. I see a space here I want to fill up. Let me fill this space up here. I just like to start the bottom out. I like to start the bottom out pretty heavy. Yeah, I like the way it's coating. All right, so let me just continue over here now. Now, the way you're gonna sew this together, let me get past here and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so you've got the two rope, two pieces of rope. And when you're sewing, you wanna sew so the two pieces of rope meet in the middle split of the of the presser foot. Now what presser foot am I using? I'm using the standard um, the standard presser foot which is on this machine it's it's letter A. If you have other brands check to see what your other brands are uh, like the Brother and Baby Lock there that, that would be presser foot J. And 
And this is pressure foot A for this Janome machine. Check with your other brands to see what they're using. Now, I am going to have to decrease the stitch length as soon as I start getting wider out here. Now, I'm looking here and saying, yeah, it's a little might be a little sparse for me, but I can always go back and fill in that bottom. Once you get into a groove and you're moving, then, you know, you'll have the right stitch length and you won't have to go over it all the time. But in the beginning, you know, it's a little tedious in the beginning. I'm just I'm just unwinding my rope, guys. I'm getting some lead here. It's a little tedious in the beginning, but this is uh, how you're going to prevent hurting your machine. If you try to do too short of a stitch length when you don't have enough to go around, it'll get hung up on you. So that's why... Um, you just go back over it a few times because once this once this circumference gets larger then it's easy to man manipulate around so you could do a shorter stitch length so even if you have a little bit that's sparse in there uh, you can fill that in or you can you can uh, let it go. I'm going to fill that in right now. I just want to fill some more of that in. Because like I said, on my bottom piece, I like to have it really filled in. And like, notice the color of the two threads together. Yes, you will use a lot of thread. That's why I said the best thread for this technique is serger thread, because you get a lot more on the spool. All right, so now I'm just going to knock my stitch length. It's at 0 0.90. I'm going to go down to 0 0.80. Actually, let's try 0.75. There we go. And you will figure out how big you want this bowl by how wide you make your bottom. It's all eyesight for me. I like this. I think I'm going to make it just a little bit shorter. So I'm going to go down to 0.65. Let's we'll see what that does. Because I like a lot of thread. And the more thread you have, the stronger your bowl will be. And I usually change bobbin when my machine lets me know that my bobbin thread is almost out. That's usually when I change bobbin, and then I'll also change the top thread too sometimes. I'll just wait for a full bobbin to go out. But if you can notice, I'm trying to keep the rope, both pieces of rope, in the split of the foot. That's what I'm doing. Now, if you have a brand machine that has a 9mm stitch width, and it goes to the full width of the stitch width, you'll have a lot more coverage. But they kind of lied on this machine. They said it's a 9mm width, but it doesn't do 9mm on, on this 
and only goes up to seven millimeter width for the zigzag. So it's kind of a little bit of a false advertising here, I feel. So perhaps there's another setting or another stitch that I need to read in my manual to figure out why or if it does. When you're sewing this, you'll be sitting here and dreaming and relaxing. Once you get to a rhythm, it's it's um it's brainless sewing. It's just you know following the guide. You'll get into a rhythm. You can dream. You can relax. And this is um a lot of people like doing rope bolts because it is very relaxing, and the end result is very rewarding. Now the rope bowl that I find very pain in the butt to do is when you cut all those strips of fabric and you have to wrap it around the the, the um, cording I'm like oh my god that takes forever and it's just it's very beautiful don't get me wrong it just takes forever this is just continuous it's continuous I find this more gratifying plus it gives you an excuse to go out and buy more thread Now you know something, let's see what it looks like underneath. There it is underneath. So I could probably even go shorter with my stitch length. Let me try going just a little bit shorter. From 6.5, let's try 0.55. That's how you test and you adjust. As this gets longer and wider, you can switch off threads a lot sooner. Change the colors. I can change the color right now. So I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I should change the color right now. Maybe, maybe I will. What happens if I take that blue, the dark blue, and I use this? Or the teal. Now so I put this and the teal color together. Well, let me change it and load it up on the thread here on the uh, the uh, in the needle. We'll see what it looks like. All right. So I have two colors of thread now. I've got the teal color with that cranberry color. I want to show you how I do this. So I got it threaded. All is like one thread. Okay. I'm threading it like one thread, and then I'm going to. There it is. Then you pull the thread off from the back. And there we go. Some people were writing on the group saying they don't like this needle threader. Um, it's not the best needle threader in the world, but it's a good needle threader. I've worked some really bad needle threaders in my time. All right, so let's get going here.
here's where it began, so I'm going to trim that off. There it is. As you can see, <clears throat> as it's getting bigger, it's easier to maneuver around. And as you see, this is my first color change. And you can see how it's growing from here. It's very exciting to watch the blending of colors, how different each color reacts. Stop, take time to straighten out your rope and give you a lot of lead so it doesn't get hung up. I don't know about all of you, but there's something about watching somebody else sew that relaxes me. And when I sew, it really relaxes me. I, I don't drink, I never have. I never had a problem with drinking, I never really drank. I never did drugs. And this is my, this is my, I would say this is my drug and my, my booze, you know what I mean? This is my therapy. I work in a hair salon, and for the majority, I have some beautiful, wonderful hair clients. But you know, every so often you get that challenging client that gets on your nerves, and you're like, oh my God, why am I being punished? And when you come home and you sit at the sewing machine, and you relax, and it just, all the stress of the day goes away. See how it's coming together? Pretty cool, right? After a couple more rows of this, now I can see my bobbin spread will be out pretty soon. So that will be a perfect opportunity to go ahead and change the top thread again, if I want. So you see, even if you only have a zigzag stitch machine, you can do this. And this is what I want to show you all. Many of you have been asking for about a year now to show you an in-depth tutorial on how I make these rope thread bolts like this and now you see okay my bobbin thread went out and I did not get a warning probably because I didn't have my sensor engaged so now it's time to change the bobbin thread I'm gonna change the bobbin thread and I'll be back and show I you. decided to keep my upper thread in right now and just change the color of the bobbin thread I'm gonna do this neon lime green color All right, I'm going to start where I, a little bit where I picked up, pick up where I left off a little bit, back the track a little bit, and move it along. You know, I talked about in one of my other videos when I did a rope bowl how cool this would be for a little miniature rug for like a Barbie house or, or doll, a doll house.
Yeah, I think I'll change the upper thread as soon as I make one more round here. See now, see how it's starting to come to life now? You see that? Pretty cool, right? That's when it's starting to come to life now. That's when the art starts to form. So I'm gonna do one more round and then I'm gonna change the color of thread and then I'm gonna start curving this up to form the walls. In fact, I think this bowl would be big enough. This would be a nice smaller bowl. Um, I'm going to start curving it up now. So the way you make the side of the wall, you start curving it up and you hold it as it sews. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I think I'll do it now. So that's how you start making the, the, the side, the walls. Sorry about hitting the camera. So let's do that. And when the side walls come up, that's when you'll start really seeing the bottom. So you hold, you hold your rope up and against the side of the left machine, but you're not, you're not pressing hard, you're just holding it up. Now some people will forget and they'll start slouching and that's when the bowl starts losing its shape. Now every machine is going to have a different setting on the length. I just told you what my setting was on this machine. This is the Janome um, Skyline S9. So whatever your length is on your machine, you just check it. You test it like you saw me testing it, how I just did this. So you do the same thing on your machine. Every machine is going to operate different. It's going to be off, like it's going to be maybe a point of a decimal, it's difference. But that's where you have to decide what you like while you're doing it. Like I said, don't press hard against here because you're going to prevent the flow and it's going to get hung up. Now I'm using a standard zigzag foot. You would think with a satin stitch you would have to use a satin stitch foot, but I'm getting great results with the, with the standard zigzag foot doing this. And that's on all my brand machines. Let's see what it looks like underneath again. Look at that. Is that cool, guys? Isn't this cool? And if I want more of the top thread to be drawn, drawn down to the bottom, I just reduce the top tension by a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. But I like what this is doing right now. Yeah, maybe I will. Let's draw, let's, let's knock the tension down. This was 2.8. Let's go to 2.6. I'll go to 2.6. I'll go one more round and see. One thing I noticed about Janome machines, even way back when, when I bought my first Kenmore that was made by Janome, and I would try to balance the zigzag stitch and I never seen the balance underneath. One side was always pulled tighter than the other. That's just the way Janome is. Well, we take advantage of that now by doing this technique because you don't have a perfectly balanced zigzag on the back. And that's an advantage for us with the Janome doing this rope roll technique. I think I will change the top thread now. So let me cut my thread. All right, and I'll be right back. I'm gonna change the top thread. You can see how it's forming now. You see how that's forming? See how the walls are starting to form? All right, I'm gonna change the top thread. So this is what I'm gonna do. I pulled this out and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna put this back and I'm just gonna do yellow now instead. So I'll use these two colors together. 
All right, so here are the two colors together. I'm going to pop it up in here, and we're going to thread it. There it is. It threads beautifully. See that? That threaded just beautifully. Pull it to the back. Get my thread back there. Get my big hands back here to bring the thread down. There it is. See how nice that needle threader works? It looks beautiful. Remember, that's two, two threads, two serger threads. Okay? I'm go under here and take off any thread tails because we're going to have more thread tails to take off once this gets started. All right, let's see what this is going to look like. Here we go. Over here, it started earlier. Now, some of you are going to sit and watch this whole thing, and some of you are going to be bored and you're going to want to fast forward. But as you can see, I talk in between, so there might be some things you'd be missing. As I'm sewing, for example, one thing I want to tell you, when I first started the new threads, I should have had the tails out longer and holding them to the side so they wouldn't bunch up underneath. Because they could see here, it kind of bunched up. But that kind of adds character, you know? <laughs> it kind of adds a little bit of character, but I'm going to um, just burn that off. There we go. See how I did that? Those nubs kind of add character. But to prevent any jamming, because I don't know about your machine, prevent any jamming, just make sure you hold the threads out when you start new. Because like I said, every machine operates differently. Just be sure you know your machine very well and you have the proper setup so you don't end up in the hospital. Your machine doesn't end up in the doctor's hospital and you won't have to hear your repairman bitching at you like, like mine was about the people who don't know how to operate their machines and mess them up and blame the machine. Or the people who complain about the needle threader. Oh, my needle threader, it keeps breaking and nothing's right. Well, you're probably using too small of a needle, too thick of a thread with the wrong size needle. You know, you got to know all these things, guys. you got to know all these things. So what's the first thing a person does? You know, it's human nature. When something goes wrong or they do something wrong, they don't know something, what's the first thing they do? They blame something else or they blame somebody else. Like, I haven't met a machine model in any brand that doesn't like metallic threads. And then you see on these sewing groups, these ladies will buy these multi-thousand dollar sewing machines and say, my machine doesn't like metallic thread. And then I'll go and I'll test drive on one of those machines that they bought, and it sews flawlessly with metallic thread. It's all in the setup, guys. It's all in your setup. So when someone says it doesn't like, my machine doesn't like this, or my machine doesn't like that, it's because the operator doesn't know how to use it. Not everyone is mechanically inclined. And to be honest with you, you know, I've taught, I've taught thousands of people across this country for many years. And the biggest thing I see is they don't pay attention, they're in a hurry. I have private classes I teach, and they're always in a hurry. They don't take their time. And that's when they mess up. It's happened to me. I wasn't paying attention. I messed up. But did I blame the machine? No. It's my fault because I wasn't paying attention. 
some people get into a marriage. I've seen this happen all the time, like in the salon. People be married, and the lady, you know, you, you suggest the lady wants suggestions for her hair, and you know, you see that her hair at the ends is really thin, you know, and you know, if you cut that hair shorter, it'll look thicker, healthier, and you'll even look younger. First thing you hear from her is, oh, my husband doesn't like short hair. And the next thing you do, you meet the husband. The husband goes, hey, when are you going to cut her hair? And I'm like, what? She told me you don't like long, uh, short hair. He goes, I never said that. So you see, there, someone's always going to blame either their spouse, their partner, the sewing machine. Someone else always wants to blame someone else for an excuse for something they don't want to do or they don't know how. Being a single man that I am, I take full responsibility for everything I do. My choice is everything. I don't have to blame the person I'm living with or the person I'm married to or the sewing machine because it's me. So let me ask you all this question again because I've asked, asked this many times before. What does sewing teach you? Sewing teaches you how to be self-sufficient and independent. So when you accomplish something, you can pat yourself on the back. If you mess something up, you take responsibility. If you don't want to do something, you take responsibility and for your own choices. You know? There was a joke in the industry I was told a long time ago that there's a lot of women that buy these and these big $15,000 sewing machines they hardly use them because they're revenge purchases because their husband probably cheated on them or their husband bought a boat so they're buying these machines out of revenge. I'm watching that TV show called Feud, uh, Capote versus the Swans and he talks about the women, how all their husbands, all these rich husbands are cheating on their wives and how the wives are getting revenge purchases or revenge gifts or, or guilt gifts. And it's like, wow, you know, people really do that in marriages? You know, is that really what's happening in the world, whether you're rich or poor? It's like, there's so much dishonesty and so much, it's, it's just, I don't know. Don't like it. But you learn. I mean, you, you're learning a lot about life from about other people. And it's like, why be in a relationship if you're not going to be honest with each other or unfaithful? Now let's see what that's looking like. It's time to change a bobbin thread. I love that, but it's time to change. So, let's change the bobbin thread. I got a lot of bobbin out of that, didn't I? There's a lot of bobbin. This is a class 15 bobbin. You get a lot out of that. So, what color should I go with next? Ah, well, let's do... I think I will do a... Let's see. Let me pull up two bobbins here. I want to do purple. Should I do the violet purple or should I do the dark purple? I think since this is light already, let's go with the dark and then I'll switch it to the light. So let's do the dark. Let's do the dark. You know, the greatest thing in life is learning from watching and observing other people. Just like you're watching and observing what I do. This is a great way to learn. Yeah, look at that. See how nice? I'm going to change the upper thread now. And I'll be right back. Now here's a couple colors I don't use very often, and I think I'm going to use them now. I think I'll put these two colors with this. Or, 
Yeah, I think I'm going to try these just because I don't use them very often. Okay, so here's my two new threads. I'm going to hold them out to the side when I start stitching. And I want to I'll remind the newbies, when you thread, when you're threading your machine, make sure your foot pedal, your presser foot is up when you thread so your thread gets down into that tension, into the tension discs so you don't have a wad of thread underneath. So always remember to thread your machine when the presser foot is up. There's no such thing as perfection with this. Don't try to be perfect, guys. Let your hair down. The back is coming along. Look at that. The back is just as pretty, sometimes prettier than the front. You see? Pretty cool, right? What do I want to do? Do I want to keep going with this color? Because sometimes just one row of a different color like this is all you need. I think I'm going to change the bobbin thread. I'm going to change the bobbin thread to, let's see. Huh. I'm going to change the bobbin thread to this. I'm going to go with the lighter. Go with the lighter. Don't, this, this is something, whatever's left on the bobbin you can use later. Can always use later. There's that, there's this. And then what about the top? Hmm. Well, I think I'll do one more layer of the top and then I'll change the top thread. Then think about what do I want for that top thread, you know? What do I want? Okay, that tail is short enough, I don't have to worry. Alright. Yeah, if you have a knee lifter, make sure you use it. I want something really, really bright. I like the cranberry, and I think I'm going to do the cranberry. Alright. Now I can see when I was off over there because I was watching my camera. So if you're off, I'm going to show you how to fix that. Let me get over here. I'm going to show you how to fix that if you get off. Because we're going to go around it again. I think it's time to change the bobbin thread. Actually, I'll give it a couple more rounds. But I'm already thinking ahead. Mm, I'm going to change the bobbin thread. You know, I'm thinking ahead, but I'm like, okay, just give it a couple more rounds and I'll be fine.
Okay, so I'm coming up to the part where I missed. So the part that I missed, I'm going to start angling this over here. And I'll just cut the thread and go backwards again. Like you can see here, I got too much green showing. You know, you may want to leave the green, it's fine, but I think I want to fill that in. See where I missed it? I should give myself, this, let this rope go around for a little bit here. That stitch. Got the thread. It's going to be an interesting look. Now I'll come back to where I left off over here. Nothing is perfect. Everything is a creative opportunity. It's going to have a whole different look from that. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this. because I don't want any more pink. That's enough pink. I'm going to switch and I'm going to add the dark burgundy with the red that's up there. Oh, this here. See, there's a little line there. Do I want to leave that? Let's just leave it. I'm just going to leave it. Give it character. All right, be right back. All right, so now I've got the, burgundy, the dark red with the burgundy type color red. I'll just hold the thread stands out here. And let me just trim off the excess here. Should I change the bobbin now? Should I change a bobbin? What color bobbin should I use? Well, I haven't done the teal, or did I do the teal? No, I didn't do the teal or the orange. Let's try the orange. Let's do the orange. Let's see what the orange will look like. Let's see what happens with the orange. Here I go. Okay, now at this point, I've got this much rope left. And I'm going to take one of the red threads out and replace it with black thread. I'll be right back. Okay. So I added black thread to... I, I took one, um, one spool of red out and I put it, replaced it with the black. So now let's go here. back this camera up so you can see. Alright, so this rope will come around here and then I want it to fade into the edge. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to cut it on an angle. Let's just do it over here. Cut it on an angle and then I'm going to lightly hit it with that 
and then wrap it around here and but you got to make sure you get it before it dries just lightly and then tack it down like that I'll do it as it gets closer There we go. All right, so I'm going to trim this down again. There we go. I just want to heat that up a bit and then rub it against there. There we go. Now it sticks. You see how that's stuck now? There we go. And then I'm going to use my little stylus here to make sure it stays there. All right, now how do we do the edges? Well, this is what we do. We just go over and over the edges. Now that I'm over here, I'm going to keep the edge of my top down. I'm going to turn off my automatic pivoting feature. Here we go. I'm going to keep the edge of this to this. Now, do I want to keep the same colors as black and red here? Uh, I think I'm going to add another black and get rid of the red, and this will be all black on top. So let me change that up. Right all back. right, I got two, two um, thread, two two black threads on the top, and I'm going to start right here and let it go. Now this is the part where I'm going to increase my stitch length. Right now the stitch length is 0.55. I'm going to take it up to 0 0.70. And it says my bobbin thread may not be sufficient. So now's the time to change the bobbin. Let's see how much bobbin thread I have. Mm, look at that. Pretty darn good. So I'll just do a dark purple because as you can see um, it is pulling down to the bottom and I'm going to pull it down to the bottom even more and I'm going to reduce my top tension even more. So let me do this. Put this back in. My top tension is set at 0.26. I'm going to bring that down to 0 0.22. Let's see how much what that does. 0.22 for the bottom for the top tension. And now I'm going to increase the stitch length again. I'm going to take it up to 0.80. And each time you pass over the top, you can feel the rim getting firmer and firmer. Now I'll increase the stitch length again. And I'll make it 1.0. increase the stitch length one more time and I'll make it 1.40 there we go look at that beautiful all right let's put it on the table and see how it looks and that my dear friends is the secret to making my thread rope balls. See that? You and I made this together. It was a movie, wasn't it? <laughs>
and you'll learn from here. You could just change it. So remember, this is what we just made. These are my other bowls I showed you earlier. See? Many, many different ways of making these bowls. See, I even make them with a curve. How do I do that? Well, maybe I'll do another video and show you how I do that one. See, that one's got a little art, artsy curve to it. You see that? A little artsy curve to it. And then, I don't think I showed you this one yet. This is two skeins of the rope together. This is a big one. This is like, put all your rolls in it for your dinner for the family. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was worth waiting for. Now you take your threads and you make it the way you want to make it. You all tell me that sewing teaches you patience. Well, I t I'm telling you sewing teaches you how to be self-sufficient and independent. Patience is something that you're going to learn in life with other things. And if you don't have patience for sewing, don't even bother with the machine. Don't ruin a good machine. But you won't ruin it if you follow what I showed you. All right? All right, take care, everybody. Until my next video, happy creativity. It's what it's all about, being creative, being self-sufficient and independent and making yourself feel so gratifying and self-rewarding for the things you accomplish on your own. See, that's all about accomplishing things on your own. You watch the class, you go home and you do it, and you can sit back and say, oh my gosh, I made that. And it's not going to look like mine. It's going to look different. Everyone is going to look different. And that's the greatest thing about art rope bowls like this is every bowl will turn out different. I'll talk to you all later. Bye now. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe because I got more videos coming. Bye.